Well, hello and welcome to this week's episode here on the Rest of Cyber Classic Car Restoration YouTube channel. And this week again, we're back at the Land Rover, the 1976 Land Rover Series 3 88 inch diesel. And this week, as the thumbnail video has suggested, we're looking at a service guide for this Land Rover. Here in the UK, we're still in the middle of the coronavirus lockdown. And I've been using this time to catch up on some long awaited maintenance and jobs here in the garage. So I thought it would be useful for you guys at home or wherever you're watching this to enjoy a little service guide that I've created here for my Land Rover. Now it is loosely based on what's in the green manual um, as per Land Rover themselves and also taking it into account the Haynes manual. Their service schedule is quite varied. I service my vehicles once a year, which is probably what I'd imagine what you guys are doing, although that will obviously depend on the mileage that you do. Once a year probably covers things a lot more in detail than it needs to, but obviously some things, if you're doing higher mileage, will not get serviced just as often. So in this week, this episode, we're going to look through the engine bay, have a look at everything that needs done under there. We're going to go underneath the Land Rover, look at everything that needs oiled and greased and changed and checked. We're going to look through the brakes and all the other little things that count as well. This of course is the Land Rover Diesel um, and just at the end of the video, if you hang on to there, I'm going to go through everything you need to do for the petrol as well, just so I'm not missing anybody out. So without any further ado, let's have a look underneath the, the bond. So here is the two and a quarter diesel lump and the problem with my black bodywork and black engine block is that it sucks all the light out of the camera so I hope you're able to see everything. First things first let's start at the front. Radiator. Coolant in here I like to change every two or three years. Um, this was recently done and I used the blue coolant. There's pink and there's all other sorts of colours but the blue one is that I use this ethylene glycol um, still in it and it's what will agree most with the cast iron block of the diesel engine and also with the petrol engine. Um, Always good to keep on top of it. You can check the level in here, which is obviously still plenty of it. And you can see a nice blue tinge there off the drips. And this is your reservoir, which is probably a little bit in the low side, so that's gonna get topped up soon. When you're over here talking about blue fluids, washer fluid, always good to keep it well topped up. Moving over to the other side of the engine bay, battery. Check the connections, make sure they're nice and tight. Um, nice and clean, corrosion free. There's an earth right down there. You might not be able to see it with the light, but it's right on the side of the battery tray. We smear Vaseline or petroleum jelly around both of these connections will keep the moisture out and keep any corrosion um, at bay also. Moving around this side, now obviously I'm dealing with a quite a stock Land Rover here, but nonetheless, um, this side is your oil bath air filter. So what you need to do here is, and I've already done it, and it was a bit of a fight to get it back in, so you'll excuse me if I don't actually open it up this time, but undo your butterfly nut, take the catch off, disconnect this from the air hose, which is just one jubilee clip there, and then this can come out, and that opens up and separates, and there's a little oil check line. I hadn't done mine in a little while, and the colour of the oil was disgusting, so really worthwhile doing, and that gets filled up with the same type of oil as you're using for your engine, which I'm going to come to now. It could be 15W40 or 20W50. I use 20W50 because it's the same as the Mars Minor and it's the same as the MG. So just to kind of keep things stuck. Staying around here then, still in the engine bay, we have two reservoirs. All right. So second one at the back is your clutch. Um, take, the, oh, take the top of this one, that one, but let's take the top of this one. In fact, you don't really need to because it is see-through. Um, but that's your fluid level, and it hasn't dropped. Okay, this vehicle is actually due a complete um, fluid change in terms of brake and clutch fluid, so that's going to get carried out soon, and I'll probably make a video of that at the time. Moving around the other side of the engine bay, enjoying this lovely evening sun we're getting. Plenty of light. This is the fuel filter. This is for the diesel model. You won't get this on the petrol. Um, underneath, if I lift that little hose up, this little drain here is to remove any water. Obviously oil floats in water, diesel is less dense than water, so it will float on the top. So if you're just doing a little checkup, you can always drain the water out or the sediment, 
but every year I change the diesel filter. It's very easy to do. One bolt on top separates the housing. Make sure you change the O-rings and put your filter in. They're only five pounds here in the UK, not too expensive. Yes, you don't need to do it every year if you're looking at the, the Green Bible or the Haynes Manual, but I think it's worthwhile doing. Moving around to the engine itself. Being a diesel engine, there's not a huge number of things that need checked or altered on an annual basis. Um, your main thing is an oil change, which we'll have a look at again underneath. That's your oil filler point. And you need to change the oil filter, which you can't see down there, but again, we'll look at down from um, down below. Um, again, as I said, I use 20W50. Some people use an oil flush um, prior to oil change. I don't, not routinely, certainly, um, but it's certainly something you may wish to consider. Whenever you're in here, generally worthwhile just having a check around, looking at the condition of your hoses, make sure they're not cracked, any wiring, um, any pipes, make sure there's nothing rubbing on anything else as well. Uh, make sure they're nicely secured and there's no, no stray wires just flying around the place. Check your brake and hydraulic hoses. Some of them are difficult to get down beside the driver's foot well. And what's also worthwhile doing, and I find makes a wonderful difference, is to spray some light oil around your throttle linkages, which are just under there. Come right down in there. And it's amazing how much difference just in the little things really does make. So let's get the bonnet closed up and we will crawl underneath and have a look at the drivetrain. Okay, so starting off at the rear of the Land Rover, um, I had a few localised repairs to do here to the diff pan. Um, I did think that's actually with chemical metal rather than welding, mostly because I've run out of wire, I've run out of gas and it's in the middle of the lockdown, I can't get anything. So use some JB Weld on some little pinholes in the differential pan and I've covered them up with some black hammerite. And actually I intend to do the full axle. So just before I go on with the service here, I've been talking the last couple of months about new springs. And this is probably the best shot you can have. The leaves are very splayed, as you can see here, and also at back, and it's as flat as a pancake. And if you look really carefully up here, the, the leaf spring actually bends slightly back on itself. So that one's absolutely knackered. This one isn't a whole lot better. It's quite rusty and the leaves are starting to splay a little. And as with most suspension components, you are meant to replace them in pairs. So a new pair of springs have been ordered today. My nice stainless steel exhaust is actually starting to rust. So a little email is going to be going to Bearmac and I will be hoping for a replacement to be sent and I'll keep you posted on that. They treated me very well when I bought this exhaust. So hopefully they continue to do that. Back to the servicing. Um, differential uses more EP90 um, or ADW90 Hypoid API GL4 standard oil and that is the drain plug and I'll take you around the other side and show you what I use or where to fill it but, but just before I do this is my very handy filling tool um, this is a Sealy item pump action and this little hook um, just fills into either your diff your transfer case your overdrive anything you need highly recommend this yeah, the volume's not great, but it wasn't very expensive, and it's certainly a lot cheaper than other items, which are probably about £100. I think this is about 14 So, for all I need it, this is a great job. So let's move around underneath the middle of the Land Rover, and we'll talk about that. This is now looking at the front of the rear diff. So this is where you fill the oil into the differential, having drained it out here. Make sure you put your drain plug in before you fill her up. Um, moving systematically forward then, prop shaft. Very easily forgotten. Um, sorry, I've got the brake on. Not gonna be able to turn that. There is a grease nipple here. There's another one here for the sliding joint. And then there's another one here. So three per prop shaft. Same for the front and check the condition of the rubber boot as well. Might need replaced. Rubber these days doesn't seem to last at all. And I use just normal lithium grease according to the grade in the handbook. Good quality grease gun is Always brilliant. I recently invested in a good one, so that's handy. Moving further forward, one of the few modifications from standard here is the X Eng handbrake, disc brake for the Land Rover. Highly recommend that. Might actually do a video on that by itself because it's such a good thing compared to the original drum. Moving further along the drive line, the ferry overdrive. A brilliant modification that I added. I like period mods, and this is probably the king. Rebuild it myself, 
completely silent. Don't know how I managed that because I've never rebuilt anything properly mechanical like that before. There's the drain plug here, and I'll show you the filler plug on top. Um, always worthwhile cleaning underneath the drain and the filler plugs, just so you don't put any dirt inside. Also moving up, this is the drain plug for the transfer case. I'll show you the filler plug further up, and mine's slightly different for a reason that you'll see will become clear in a little minute. <laughs> moving further forward, my lovely clean gearbox, and this is an example of me cleaning up around the plug. So it's the, the drain plug, and the filler is just up there above, also nice and clean around it. To be honest, under here needs really sorted out and tidied, but you can't have everything life, so. EP9D for both the gearbox, the transfer box, and this is a non-standard cover. I'm sure you've noticed this was a Rocky Mountain finned cover, um, merely because I just fancied one. And here you can see another modification. This is a Rocky Mountain dipstick, and this is for checking the oil level in the transfer case, which is great, um, because their overdrive actually shares oil with the transfer case. That's why I have a dipstick, but I find it a lot easier to use. So that goes into the filler plug, and then they give you a new one for the top, which I'll show you and take you around in a minute. Otherwise, under here, front prop shaft, there are three more nipples on this. Um, one for the sliding joint, which is hiding underneath that cross member, one for the UJ and the other one for the front UJ. And then differential again under here, uh, drain oil at the bottom and the filler plugs around the front, I'll show you that in a little second. Another drain plug here on the swivel and there on the swivel and you fill them on the back end, which is really badly, there we go. That's where you fill the swivels, all with EP90. Don't believe what they say. It's far better at that than the one-shot grease for the swivels. Front springs are pretty good. Bushes are shot. Gonna do those soon while I'm under here. I'll just take you around here and show you the diff filler. And there, haven't quite got this far this year, but that's the filler for the front differential. And it's got a nice oil stain witnessing there from the last year. Other things to think about when you're under here are the ball joints. Ball joints. One on each end of the, of the steering rod, so one here, there's two in there, there's another one here, and there's two up above that chassis member, which are an absolute nightmare to get at. Um, so those require a bit of concentration and thinking. And speaking of other things that are a nightmare to fill, the steering relay, let's take you up here and show you where that is. Now I hope you'll excuse the quality of my videoing here, but the steering relay is that the dark black thing lurking in the depths in there, and you need to loosen two nuts off the top casing, not more than two, otherwise the top case will fly off. One to let the air out, and one to, or, oh, air out, and one to let oil in. Um, absolute horrible job. There's another ball, ball joint hiding in there, and there's another one way in the darkness in there. They're a nightmare to get to. So here I am in the inside of the Land Rover. I've lifted up the middle panel, staying in the theme of the mechanical side of things, just finishing up that really. Um, filler plug for the ferry overdrive and I fill it up to the mark with the plug not quite screwed in. Um, just gives you a little bit of extra capacity. I wouldn't overfill it all the way to the top, though I have seen some people do that, but they have to modify the air venting tube. And this is my Rocky Mountain filler here for the transfer case, because the original's taken up with the dipstick, which is that nice little knurled piece of brass down there. Really does need cleaned up in here, doesn't it? Oh, bit of excessive grease there, needs tidied up. So let's have a look at some other things that need done whenever you're servicing your Land Rover Series 3. So other things to check are your wheel bearings. So you're going to want to give the wiggle a shake up and down. Um, grab the wheel at the top, or grab the wheel at the bottom and shake it between the two. Um, that's always a good check of your wheel bearings. Do that all four corners. And also check the steering joints at the front. So grab it at nine o'clock and three o'clock and then shake it that way. And that'll get, make, let you know if there's any play anywhere there. It's always worthwhile checking. Other things to look at is steering, sorry, not steering, brakes. Adjusting your brakes with the horrible little adjusters, which are on the fronts of the back wheels and the fronts of the rear wheels. I've done that the wrong way. Front of the back and front of the front wheels. There we go, got there in the end, didn't I? Um, make sure they're all tightened up because it'll make a huge difference to your safety, um, especially if you've twin leading shoe setups, 
um, other or other modifications. I have the single leading shoes um, as standard that was on this 88 inch. Other things I'd suggest looking at would be electrics. Um, Lucas electrics are not always the most wonderful. I tend to go around every year, take the bulbs out, squirt a bit of WD-40, lots of light penetrating oil in all the bulb holes and just give us the contacts a little rub with a little bit of emery paper. Um, so I'm going to do that as well. I don't necessarily do it with the headlamps but I do check that everything is working and also do the same around the back. Other little things that are nice to do, check you have a little bit of oil on your hinges front and back and the sides and a little bit in your locks and your door catch mechanisms as well. Now it's probably a good time to get caught up on all those little jobs you've been putting off, especially if you're in lockdown as we continue to be here in the UK. And so there you have it, the service guide for a Land Rover Series 3. Between the 88 inch and the 109 inch, very little really changes. The brake setup on the 109 inch is slightly different and later diesel engines will have vacuum hoses for servos and that sort of thing too. But over the entire run range of the Series 3, it almost very much stayed the same. Series 2 quite similar as well, but again the clutch arrangement was slightly different and there's little finer things, but my experience is largely with the Series 3. I said at the start of the video that I'd talk a little bit about the petrol as well, um, and let's give you some tips about that. The 2.25 uh, litre petrol engine is much the same as any other four cylinder single carburetor petrol engine. You're going to have to give the carburetor a once over, check your mixture and also check your timing on the distributor. Depending on whether or not you have an electronic ignition fit or not, you're, with the old style original ignition you're going to want to check your points gaps um, and pay attention to that. Spark plugs, check your HT leads and that's really about it. Um, you've got, there's a little petrol sedimentation bowl on the petrol models as well so you're going to have to give that once over, empty it out, give it a bit of a clean and really there's not a huge amount different um, for the exact points gaps and so on I will leave you to refer to the Land Rover manual but if you want you can fire me a question and I'm happy to answer that as well. And so that's really it the full service guide and what I would do every year to my 1976 Land Rover Series 3 88 inch diesel. Um, it's fairly comprehensive, it involves quite a lot of oil, um, filters, not a huge expense but I think it's very important to keep on top of it, prevention being better than the cure. If you can look after all your mechanical components with the best quality oils you can afford, that's probably the best way to avoiding expensive bills coming down the line at you and keeping your Land Rover off the road for extended periods of time. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below, give me a thumbs up and a like, and fire me a comment. I reply to them all and I appreciate all your feedback. Once again, thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you again next week. Cheerio!